Hello, hello, hello there, beautiful Brown Girl family. Welcome to another episode of Brown Girl Boss. I'm definitely excited about our show tonight. Um, but before I jump into all of that, I want to thank you all for always hanging out and being a part of the beautiful Brown Girl family and uh, coming to see what we have to offer you. So as you are getting in here and um, getting settled, go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments. Let me know where you are watching from. Um, also, if this is your very first time hanging out with me on uh, Brown Girl Boss, let me know that as well. Love to celebrate our first timers. Um, would also like for you to tag a couple of your friends and share the broadcast on your page. Tonight, we're going to be talking um, a few things. We're going to be talking strategy. We're going to be talking faith. We're going to be talking about um, self-care and what that looks like for us as entrepreneurs. So we definitely have a lot um, that we're going to discuss tonight. So again, if you will, go ahead and start introducing yourselves in the comments. Let me know where you are watching from. And also let me know if this is your very first time hanging out here on uh, Brown Girl Boss. Love to celebrate you. Tag some of your friends in the comments to hang out with you and also share the broadcast on your page. So I see you all get in here. Want to do a couple shout outs um, for our first timers that are here for the very first time. So hello to Dawn from Kissimmee. First timer here from Florida. Florida. That was my old stomping ground. So welcome, welcome to you. Um, we also have Linda is here from Federal Way, Washington. We have Jennifer is here from Fayetteville, North Carolina. She wants us to know she is an OG. She is always here in the house ready to take the notes and learn all the things. We also have Crystal who is here from Maryland. So welcome, welcome to those of you. I see some others are logging in. When you get an opportunity, go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments. Again, let me know where you're watching from and let me know if this is your very first time. I see Leslie's first time from Picayune, Mississippi. Hey, boo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so for my first timers, I love to give you all spirit fingers because it just makes me happy inside. So... Spirit fingers for y'all. Welcome to our beautiful Brown Girl community. Absolutely excited to have you here. So again... Want to make sure that you tag some of your friends um, that could benefit from this conversation. Share the broadcast on your page so that uh, others can figure out what you are doing tonight. So we got a few first timers. So let me do the official welcome to where you are right now. So good evening and welcome to BBG TV Brown Girl Boss. This is our virtual platform that allows us to connect with other like-minded women who are on a mission to live their very best lives. We come to you weekly with programming that will challenge and inspire you and get the conversation going to connect with other beautiful brown girls. My name is Kimberland and my feet are currently planted in Mexico City, Mexico. So I am super excited to be here with you all um, this evening and I'm really excited about the guest that we have today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her in just a second, but a, a few more shout outs I see. We have uh, Rawa, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, is here for the first time. We also have Joyce from Buffalo, New York is here for the first time. Priscilla from New Orleans, home stomping grounds here for the first time. Um, so welcome to you all and spirit fingers to you. Glad to have you here in the house with us. Okay, so y'all, our guest tonight, I have known a long time. I'm not going to put our ages out there unless she feels like she wants to, okay? But we actually went to high school together um, in New Orleans, and um, I have been watching her as she's been working and growing and doing her thing, you know, and have been wanting to get her onto the show for the longest time and was finally able um, to pin her down. So tonight on our show, we are talking to Kelly Salney. She is the Director of Strategic Partnerships at Camelback Ventures and the Head of Growth and Strategic Partnerships with Brain Trust Founder Studio. Kelly lives for entrepreneurship, channeling the spirit of her mentor and grandfather, who is a founder of a successful beverage company. 
in his early years. Kelly is a goal-oriented operations consultant offering more than 10 years in end-to-end -end business scaling and strategy expertise that directly results in expansion, efficiency improvements, and cost savings. Kelly actually spent 11 years working with Carol's daughter in uh, New York City. She started as a temp and worked her way all the way up to director of operations. She was a key strategist in scaling the business from a $3 million um, a month business to 40 million, okay? And was also strategic in um, having the company be sold to L'Oreal and get acquired and multi-channel distribution and all of the things, okay? Kelly is a New Orleans native and just recently moved back home as a contract consultant to apply her experience and guide other emerging organizations on growing their businesses. Kelly holds a Bachelor of Science and Master's of Business Administration from Florida A&M, Sis is busy. She be out here doing all the things, okay? So definitely excited to have her here and honored that she is taking some time out of her busy schedule to hang out with us. So let me get her in here so we can welcome Kelly. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> that was the ultimate <laughs> intro. You want to just follow me everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> I had to let the people know, girl, this is the business, okay? No, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. I am so excited to have you here. Um, definitely, like I said, have been trying to catch up with you for a while so that we're able to have this exchange. Um, and I know that there's just so much that we want to unpack, so I don't want to belabor the time. I do want to okay. start off by asking, um, I mentioned that you were working with Carol's daughter. And that was kind of um, right after you graduated from college. So kind of mm -hmm. talk to us about how you even got directed into working with that company and what that story was like. Yeah, no, sure. First, let me just say thank you for having me on. Um, I know you didn't want to divulge our age, but <laughs> I will. So I've been knowing, <laughs> I've been knowing Kimberly since I was 16, to be exact. And I am in the 4040 club now, so that gives you an idea if you guys want to do the math of how long Kimberlyn and I have been knowing each other. And I'm just super proud of you, Kimberlyn, as always. Um, it is just great to see, um, you know, you thrive. So I just want to open up, open by saying that. As far as <laughs> um, to start in terms of um, Carol's daughter. So my entryway into Carol's daughter was actually very unconventional. I had just finished from FAMU and basically the job that I thought I was going to have after college, I had to pass on because I was supposed to start the week of Katrina. Mm. Um, and so um, I ended up passing on that job. It was a job at ESPN. I had interned at ESPN the summer before graduation and interestingly enough I when I interested well luckily enough I should say um, I ended up uh, developing a relationship and a mentor with someone with this with this man Alex Bowden who was at uh, he was a director at ESPN at the time fast forward to after Katrina again I didn't have a job I was I was searching um, and my mentor Alex was like well I just started at this small hair company um, I can't afford to pay you full time, but I know you really want to live in New York. So why don't you just come up and temp while you look for full time work in New York? Because it's easier to find a job in the city if you're living in the city. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I packed my bags um, and just, you know, moved to New York instantly. I was sleeping on a friend's couch. And uh, when I started Carol's Daughter, I mean, it was the most garage operated she had one store in Brooklyn. We were in this warehouse in Brooklyn that was not the prettiest looking, I'll just say, but it was it was actually now when I look back, it was one of the most beautiful moments in my life because it was mm. just women on the floor with like these big gumbo pots making shea butter this and lotion that and shampoo this. And we were, you know, it was very, very, very organic. Um, and everybody thought I was wasting my time. I had just been to family with my master's. Um, and everybody was like, why are you wasting your time at this rinky dink hair, mm -hmm. hair, whatever. But the moment I walked into Carol's daughter, I knew it instantly. I knew mm. it instantly it was going to be something big. Like, I just knew it. And I was just like, no, 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 no. This is where I want to be. And I always think I'm a little crazy because of that. Because I'm just like, who would walk into some nasty warehouse and be like, oh, this is, this is where I want to work. 
but I just knew instantly Carol's daughter was going to be big. And I, I knew the movement, this whole natural hair move. I just knew all of it was, um, I just knew it. I hadn't studied it. It was just literally, you know, my just trusting my feeling, but also just trusting what I knew Black women were doing in real life. Mm -hmm, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, didn't need, I didn't need any data to tell me what me and my friends were literally going through. Um, so that's how I started. I so appreciate that. And I want to go back to the part where you were like, people thought that you were crazy. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times um, in our community, we talk a lot about work culture. We talk a lot about showing up as our authentic selves. Like we have a lot of conversation about how to exist in these spaces. And I'm really wondering if it's possible for you to maybe pinpoint some of the things that you felt or saw at Carol's Daughter mm -hmm. that gave you that release to be like, yeah, this is where I'm going to sit for a moment. Yeah. I think when I look back, so, some of the things is I just remember sitting in meetings where, you know, I was surrounded by like other smart Black women um, at Carol's Daughter because again, we were a young emerging company at the time. Mm -hmm. And just being able to say, like, Black girls don't do that. Oh, yeah, you know, Black girls like that. You know, just being able to be honest and not having to be so, you know, like in corporate America, having to be so um, polished. But being to be to, to answer your question, kind of using the same language, the fact that I was being encouraged to be my authentic self, mm. I think, was just, it was just a breath of fresh air, especially because as much as I love FAMU, um, and I, you know, I, I think if I had to do it all over again, I would go to FAMU over and over again. Mm. I think that um, in the business school in particular, though, you know, we were being trained for corporate America. So we were being trained a certain way. I don't, I don't think those same rules apply, you know, 20 years later, mm -hmm. but um, we were being trained to, to, you know, assimilate to a certain type of culture. Right. Um, and um, which was, you know, right for that time. Um, and Carol's daughter was just so not that. And I just, I just leaned into the authenticity of, you know, this idea of we're actually going to create an ecosystem in the industry for all of these women who don't want to relax their hair or, you right. know, or don't look a certain, you know, they're not a certain color or, you know, what have you. Like we want to make products for all women, all different hair, you know, we want to be as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that in itself, it was just something that I didn't know until I was there that um, I really wanted and needed. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm listening to you and I'm listening to um, your wisdom as you're speaking about what this looks like, right, to operate in these industries. And what I'm wondering is what the process was like for you to walk in as a temp right where your mentor was mm -hmm. like we can't really you know pay you for real right. for real but if you want to come by um to actually mm -hmm. working up to um being so strategic and everything that was happening how did you position yourself to have your um your unique skill set and your unique eye be respected that they would be like yeah we need to put kelly over here because she know what she's talking about yeah, so um, I actually love this question. So when I was when I first started at Carol's Daughter, my mentor who hired me was in operations, and that's not even what I studied. I I, I was pursuing a career in, in sports marketing, so I was way on the other end of the spectrum mm -hmm. as a beauty company in operations. <laughs> um, right. And I just started like improving processes around the the warehouse, and you know I I had just graduated from college, so I did understand data and things of that nature. So I was just kind of looking at the data and just, you know, improving things. I was, I was improving processes. I was organizing. I was doing all the, I was adding value mm -hmm. um, to the point that they just created a job for me. Like we'll find mm -hmm. the money and we'll, and we'll create something for you. And I learned in that moment, particularly when you are building a business is you don't hire for skill set, you hire for talent. So my, I didn't, my skill set was not in supply chain. It wasn't in operations. That's not even mm -hmm. all the internships, all the internships I did prior had nothing to do with that. But 
I understood that I was adding value and I wanted to keep adding value because I wanted to stay there. And Carol's daughter needed that value. So mm-hmm. they created something for me. Um, and I had to study it. Like I was studying stuff like supply chains for dummies. Like I really want, I was vested at that point. So I really wanted to, to help with what I thought was broken. We were constantly out of stock when I first started Carol's Daughter. And for anybody who out there who's looking into building a business, being out of stock is like one of the worst things you can do. Being over stock is also one of the worst things you can do because that's, that's money that you have tied up. Being, but being out of stock for sure is, is lost money. So that was a specific problem that I was you know, determined to solve for the company. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I created value for myself. And again, I was with entrepreneurial people. I was with uh, Lisa Price and Steve Stout. Um, and again, they were more interested in how I was added value. The degrees I had and all that other stuff didn't that matter. Didn't matter. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, it was just about the, the organic authenticity of, you know, how our values align. And what mm-hmm. we I hear you saying a couple things in this. And again, this is something that we talk about um, in our community all the time is being able to identify and communicate where you bring value, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Having the eye to look for places that you're like, I got something for that. Mm -hmm. Um, And taking the initiative to be able to offer some type of solution that can put you in a position where people start to be like, wait, hold on. I don't know Mm -hmm. know. this. This know what she talked about a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as we're those of us, because we're kind of in three uh, different categories here at Beautiful Brown Girls. So some of us are in the corporate world and we're, you know, thriving in that area. Some of us are in the entrepreneurial world and we're all in and just, you know, how do we make this work? And some of us are teeter-tottering in that center. Like we have um, these dreams, but we're still working this full-time job and really trying to figure this out. But something that I took from what you just said that I think is important, no matter which space that we're in, is to be thinking about what problem we can solve, right? Mm-hmm. Whether that be in your corporate space or whether that be in your entrepreneurial space, like what, what, what can you help and contribute to whatever this space is that you're in? Yeah, I mean, let, let me just back up and say a few things, because um, this is something I, I often like to highlight, you know, um, as I've gotten older, I realized how keen kids are and how uh, they pick up more by what they see versus mm-hmm. what you actually tell them. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I grew up in a house. My mother was a nurse. She always wanted to be a nurse. She was a nurse. Mm-hmm. My father was a teacher and a, a basketball coach, and that's what he always wanted to do. So I grew up in a house with two people who got up every day and loved what they did. Um, and so, I just thought that's what work was. Like you get up when you grow up, you're supposed to find what you really love and do that. You know, like I never, I didn't, I didn't know of any other way. Like that was normalized for me because Mm. that's what I thought. Now, no one ever told me you better, you know, wake up and do what you love every day. No one ever told me that. Mm -hmm. This is what I Mm -hmm. thought. Um, And so that's what I, you know, for me, um, I don't think I ever took even an internship or anything if I didn't know that I was going to enjoy doing it. Mm. And even though you're talking about these three buckets now of what you want to do, of where, you know, your audience Mm. is, Mm. I feel like even now I'm kind of spanning all three. Like I have a full-time job, but I'm still doing contract work. I'm thinking about just doing full contract work and being a full entrepreneur. So I truly understand that. And it's just a, a lesson that even at, you know, 41, it's ever evolving, like finding your joy, finding your happiness, finding, um, you know, what you want to get up, to, what, you, what you want to give up, get up and do every day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's ever evolving. You don't stay in one spot forever. Go on the days where people go work at one company for 30, 30 years and get their pension. That's not even right life anymore. You know, um, people think it was lo- me staying at Carol's daughter for 11 years. That was long. <laughs> that was a long you know, time. Long. Yeah, that was, a, you know, I know many, most of my friends had two, three jobs. Mm. at least you know within that 11 year span Mm -hmm. um so and I'll also just say the money will pay off like I I wasn't making a lot of money when I first started Carol's Daughter but I definitely made it up 
and you know, and hype. So if if you invest in yourself, the money will, the money will pay off. Mm. So let's talk about this. I don't want people to think. I wait because I don't want people to think I'm one of those people who think the money isn't important. No, the money matters. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) the heck yeah! Look, we here to get the bag now. We not working for free, okay? So yeah, yeah. So I don't. I'm I'm not trying to say, oh, go be a starving artist. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you got to own your value and charge your worth. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that part. That part. So to that value and thinking about, you just mentioned like, you know, you grew up watching your parents who loved doing what they did. And that's just what you thought that you were supposed to do. How did you find your passion? Um, what does that look like for those of us who are like, I got this job, girl, but I know this ain't it. Like, how can we find yeah. our passion and tune in? Yeah, I think, um, I think, well, I know for me, I'm a learn by doing type of person. So I'll quickly get a little side hustle and decide if I'm feeling it or not. Um, you may have to put in some extra hours. You may have to clock out at five and then come home at work from seven to nine or something or on the weekend. Um, but I think finding my passion. Um, so first is figuring out what I'm good at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's one piece of it. Um, my passion is another piece. And then my joy, those could be, sometimes they overlap. Sometimes they, they don't. They're three separate things. Mm-hmm. Finding out, you know, figuring out what I'm good at, you know, just my skill sets. That's um, that's just a matter of you know going after the work, uh, which is something I, I particularly tell the young people who are in, entering the job market. But I would say it to anyone. I don't want to confuse that with a, a Kim K, and, and then I'm saying go work hard. That's not what right, I'm saying. Right. Right. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is don't be afraid to um, if you see a project or something at your job, or if you see something that is broken, you know ask, you know, go ask, hey, can I work on this? Or do you mind if I take a stab at that? You know, and you have to kind of figure out what you're good at in those mm-hmm. things. And it's not a, and, and don't rely on other people's validation because mm. don't, you got, you got, you don't want to get caught up in what they need you to do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to make their job, you know, you have to figure mm-hmm. out what you're good at, um, what you enjoy doing and what you're good at kind of simultaneously. So that's one piece of it. In mm-hmm. terms of my of your, my passion, I think that probably overlaps more with you know what brings me what brings me joy, mm-hmm. um, and I think you know really understanding what your value set is. Mm-hmm. So that's just you know a matter of like um, I'm a big believer in self reflection. I'm a big believer. Excuse me, that's a fly. Um, I'm a big <laughs> believer. <laughs> I'm a big believer in self reflection. I'm a huge believer in um, women doing like retreats and spa days and just completely indulging in yourself. I'm a big believer in therapy. So anything that's going to help you clear your mental space to give Mm. you time. Um, So for instance, one of the things I promised myself in 2022 is that I was going to lean into more like black creative and black art. Mm. Um, And so I, you know, I've been, I think I've been pretty good at, at, you know, holding myself to that and like really, I'm pushing myself to be more creative, but also um, study more creative, study more artists, you know, read more things of that nature. Um, and I think that kind of prompts the self-reflection and, you know, figuring out like what motivates you, um, you know, what drives you, you know, like yeah. what, um, what is it that if you could figure out a way to, to ev- invoke your passions and your work, you know, um, that's what you should do. Like I said, my, my mother was a nurse, which was serving people. And my mm-hmm. dad was a teacher, which was about serving people. Thanks. And me and my brother, um, I think that's something that we just picked up from them, which is um, the, the enjoyment of serving. So mm-hmm. even with like, you know, with Carol's daughter or fast forward with the work I do with Camelback, I still find those as um, servant positions. You know, like I feel like yeah. when I was with Carol's daughter, we were creating space for Black women to be um, their most beautiful selves. And at Camelback, you know, we serve entrepreneurs of color and women. Um, and our job is really to break down barriers and help these entrepreneurs scale, scale their businesses, really to go back to serve their communities. 
mm. um, because of, because we, we we service social entrepreneurs. So I like being of a service um, in those in those ways. I like how you frame that um, and community. I want you all to like actively reflect on this. You know, I, y'all can't, I can't divorce myself from the teacher that I am. Um, but I really am thinking to myself, like identifying what are our skill sets? Because I think that some of us may not know specifically, I can speak from being in education. I'm in a field where our skill set is historically undervalued and, um, you know, the, the saying is those who can't teach as if we don't go to school for this, as, as if we don't train for this, right? So all of the skill sets that we have, we may not view them as a, a viable skill set because we've been told that they're not valuable, right? So any of the others of you who may be out there that are in those types of situations, my first challenge to you would be to find your actual skill set. Like, what are the things that you are good at? But then secondly, thinking about your values, I appreciated how you shaped that your values all go back to service. And mm -hmm. it's really about wherever you are, how can you serve in that capacity? So my question to those of you who are watching is what is your value set? Like what are the things that you value in a space? So like Kelly mentioned at Carol's Daughters, she was encouraged to show up as, our, as, as her authentic self. That's a value. Like I wanna be able to show up as me or knowing that um, maybe this is a space of collaboration. Like maybe that's something that's important to you or you want to be able to serve like what does that look like so respond to that in the comments for me y'all what is your value set that is important to you um in your space so kelly what i wanted to ask excuse me um what i wanted to ask was about um how you translated so you started out with carol's daughter is like okay work your way up all right and now how did you translate that into the work that you do currently yeah, um, so <laughs> much like Carol's daughter, this job kind of came to me. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I met the CEO just like over coffee. Somebody just thought we should, we should talk. And it really wasn't until like a year later, he called me. He's like, I have this job opportunity um, if you're interested. It wasn't even the job I have now, but I guess I killed it on the on the interview so he was like mm -hmm. well actually I want you to do this instead mm -hmm. but what what really so I started as a contract worker at Camelback which I thought I was just going to do which was fine um and it wasn't until we had a showcase for our entrepreneurs which was my was, was my first time seeing them um and just seeing the brilliance of my of the entrepreneurs we served I was just like this is what I want to do I want to I want to help all 17 of these entrepreneurs find the resources, the money, mm -hmm. whatever they need. And I want, to, I want to keep doing that for every cohort. So I had a business background. So, I, you know, I understood money and business and what it took to scale a $3 million to $40 million business. So I was also a little testimony that it could happen. Carol's mm -hmm. Daughter is a Black female founded brand mm -hmm. um, who sold her company for over $100 million. And I, my fingerprints are all over that. Yeah. So I was also a walking testimony that this could happen. I, I don't, I don't have any feelings now, thanks to Carol's daughter. Mm. Um, and so I wanted to at least, you know, some of that juju, the rub off <laughs> yeah. on the entrepreneurs that um, to say as hard as it is that you will have. I tell people you had a bad day. No, I had bad years. Like <laughs> I was like, it, 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 it can get that hard, but um, I would like to say, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that through my testimony and, and my, my, my background that I am giving them, um, I'm allowing them to be proximate to a success story. Um, and that's, that's just what I wanted to do. Like, I didn't need, I can work at one Carol's daughter, I can make 17 Carol's daughter. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so, that, so, you know, I was just, I think there's strength in numbers and I, I definitely believe in black entrepreneurship. It's so I think it's, it's vital to um, job creation, to, 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 to creating more uh, black middle and upper class uh, communities. I think it's, I think we, 
I think naturally black people are philanthropists. Now we may not all, I tell people all this all the time, just cause you don't let white people convince you just cause you can't write a million dollar check that you're not a philanthropist. Mm. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, I really believe that the more that we can create an ecosystem where we're supporting each other and, and again, everybody might not be an entrepreneur, but we can all be investors. Mm. Um, that is, that will be the key to how we, um, can close the racial, racial wealth gap as well as advance, um, community needs. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because you mentioned this when you were talking about, um, your studying in business school of how you felt that um, school, and I'll just, being an educator, I'll just say school in general, is uh, designed to help us fit into these boxes, right? And a lot of times those boxes are boxes that were created by whiteness and um, what white people deem as successful and professional. Mm -hmm. As you have grown, right, and you mentioned like Carol's daughter, like completely removed the ceiling. Like, can't nobody tell Kelly she can't do nothing, okay? Because you <laughs> already know that you can do it. So, what does it look like um, to, or what are some of the things that you decided to embrace, or some of the things that you decided to leave behind that allows you to flourish in this new space that you're in? Um, in terms of things that I've learned, I've had to leave behind. So mm -hmm. a lot of my work is in fundraising with Camelback, which I've never done. Mm -hmm. And when I first started Camelback, I definitely had imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what it's called? Imposter yeah, that's what it's called, yeah. girl. Talk to us about um, it because we be talking <laughs> about it, honey. <laughs> I definitely had a case of it. Um, and I, 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 I can't say there was one particular thing that helped me get over it, but the more I got into this work um, and the more I had to just really start self-reflecting and checking myself about who I was, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know exactly how I left it behind, but I, I feel like I was doing enough work of, having the confidence in myself to, mm -hmm. to some kind of way it, it dissolved. I know that's not mm -hmm. the best answer, but I think also I recognize I had it. It's mm -hmm. like with any other habit, right? Like you got to, mm -hmm. or, you know, like a bad habit. You have to acknowledge that you have it. Um, and once I realized that I had it, um, you know, I knew I had to treat it, so to speak. Can I pause <laughs> um, you right there for a second? Because yeah. I'm wondering what, let you know that you were struggling with imposter syndrome? You know what? I was having reoccurring dreams. It was okay. Different. And I was like, what does this dream mean? And then I kind of self, self diagnosed myself, which was, it was, I was having a reoccurring dream. I wasn't sure if I graduated from college. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, Years uh, down the line after you've already graduated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get it out. Was, it was this weird dream where, like, I thought I graduated, but there was this class that I wasn't sure if I passed. It was really weird. I, I'm not, I don't expect anybody to be this <laughs> left with it. But I was like, why do I keep having this dream? And then I realized that it was this lack of confidence that like, yeah. you know, I had done something. Um, but I think also within that, I think I was like, I was being real honest with people about my lack of confidence. Like, I, you know, mm -hmm. you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable and hopefully everybody listening has a great support system and great friends like I have to mm -hmm. just be honest with those things and just kind of, you know, like allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Um, like I said, I, I don't know if I was necessarily going to therapy when, um, when I was, when I had imposter syndrome, but I was definitely talking to a lot of people mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, kind of talking my way through it. And it wasn't really until um, a, great, a good friend of mine from FAMU, who she's really, really successful, and she was talking about imposter syndrome. And she, you know, she said it wasn't until this, this, this woman, this white woman, was, I don't know, almost trying to use it against her. Mm. And, you know, to, you know and, and she was, like, way more successful than this woman. Mm -hmm. was, you know, she was like, wait a minute, no, you are the imposter. Like, mm. <laughs> 
girl, she was like, why are you putting this on me? You are the imposter. And that's, that was kind of a light bulb for her. Um, and I think I had a lot enough of those moments that, you know, finally I was just like, why am I, you know, like I know who I am and what I've done. But it, again, it, it definitely takes, you have to create the space for self-reflection. You mm-hmm. have to create the space um, to be vulnerable with others. You know, you have to give yourself enough grace yeah to get, you know to, to get to get past those things and I do feel like as, as black women um that's why I said like I believe in indulging in ourselves because we're the first generation that's really been allowed to do that yeah so take you know I tell take your trip sis take off take do, do you know like do whatever you need to do to um protect your peace and your you know your 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 mental wellness because I do think is I think I think we are luxury. I think raw mm-hmm. girls are mm-hmm. luxury, mm-hmm. and I think we deserve luxury. And mental health, um, or investing in your mental health, you know, is a luxury. The way we would invest in our beauty, part yeah. of, you know your beauty, part of your beauty is your mental health. And mm. so, um, you should you should spare no expense on those things. I love that. Um, We actually, we're really big on mental health here. And we actually just had a mental health panel last week where we had three brown girl mental health specialists that were talking about um, some of the things that we're discussing. And one of the things I wanted to push in on is where you were talking about creating this space. Um, Mm -hmm. So we had talked to them about boundaries and what it looks like to set boundaries. And um, I I would like for you to talk a little bit about that, because um, I think as um, Black women, we already struggle with setting boundaries, as well as um, thinking about in entrepreneurship, how we struggle with setting boundaries, but also struggle with that fear factor that you mentioned, right? So, you know, I gotta, I don't know if people are gonna find me out in Pasta Central, I'm like all that kind of stuff. So I wonder what it looks like for you to actually create the space in your life to be able to take care of yourself and prioritize your peace. What what did that process look like for you? Yeah, that's something I'm still learning how to do because um, I know for me, and I find this, again, with a lot of Black women I know, if you are the one to have made it in your mm-hmm, family, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of burden tends to fall on you. Um, and that has definitely been a weight on me. And, you know, this whole strong Black woman thing that you're supposed to wear as pearls is really more like a trope. <laughs> it's really like it weighs you down if you try to fit into that persona. Um, Mm -hmm. And so in terms of boundaries, like learning how to say no, um, it's something I'm, I'm getting better at. I'm not saying I'm great at it, but, but I'm getting better at um, setting boundaries in terms of even what my time in particular, because my time is, is that was everybody's greatest asset. Mm -hmm. So, so for instance, like, my mornings are my mornings. I don't even like, I, I rarely even have meetings before 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. Because I need to work out. I want to meditate. You know, I, I just need to clear my thoughts. Now, mm-hmm. I am a late a night owl, so I can do that. Same. <laughs> um, but, um, so yeah, like for me, mornings, I protect my mornings. I don't do anything on Saturdays. Don't ask me. I don't even do a brunch. Like, I don't mm-hmm. do anything on Saturday. I don't do hair and nails. I'm not babysitting. I'm not doing anything on my Saturdays. So from a time perspective, I do try to do things like that. As mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier, um, and this is more a, a self-boundary, um, as someone who just does a lot of racial equity work, that could get very uh, tiresome. Oof. So I've been trying to lean in more on the aspirational things and the creative and the art things as, as opposed to just like the trauma. Pieces yeah. of it, but like you know the greatness in us so you know that's something that I've been doing um I go on trips like so for instance and I posted about this last year when I did it I went I went to California for a month um but even like talking myself into going to California for a month when I look back like the mental acrobats I had to do and I was like and then finally 
I was just like, why, why can't I go to California for a month? Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Like, what is really stopping me? I have the money. Mm-hmm. Like, why, why, why can't I do it? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes you have to really check yourself about, you know, mm-hmm. again, what, what, what uh, walls are you putting up? Um, and so like, and I could work from anywhere. I work from home. So right. you know, I went to California for a month, which was great. You know, it's something I said I wanted to do every year and take a month. So it wasn't necessarily every day was a vacation, but, you know, I was getting out of my comfort zone um, and just going to like a beautiful space. So those are some of the things I do. But again, it is something I'm still working on in terms of boundaries. Mm. But to your question, I am learning that you have to have them. <laughs> for sure. Um, I don't keep anyone around me who I feel like, it's always, you know, Debbie Downer, you know, like mm-hmm. I, my friends are great. They're great supporters and they allow me to support them. I don't keep, and it, it doesn't matter how long I've been friends with them. I have new friends and old friends. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not one of those people who think I, I, I like making new friends. Um, but if I, if the energy is wrong, I don't, I don't even bother anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think the having the awareness, right? I hear you talking a lot about the self-reflection piece and spending time with self to really understand what that looks like for you so that mm-hmm. you can have the awareness to sense somebody's energy or to sense, um, you know, that this is somebody that's good to connect with or somebody that's not. One other thing I wanted to um, ask you about in, and you kind of mentioned this, of uh, being in our 40s, and I'm, I'm in the same boat with you, not having kids, not being married, how do you deal with the world's definition of success? And how have you chosen to define success for yourself? Oh, Lord, this is a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so all right. So here's where we're going to get into the, <laughs> the nitty gritty of things. Okay. The real. This is where we're going to get into the real. Um, okay. I can, let me, let me, I don't even know where to start on that. So <laughs> I think a few things. Um, I would be lying if I said that in my thirties, I didn't allow uh, the world to project all of that foolishness mm-hmm. on me. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing about once you hit 40, for anybody who's knocking on 40, 40 is your reality check year. Fair. Because at 40, you have to just face what life is. Nobody's out there, generally speaking, no one is saying, oh, I want to be married and have kids by the time I'm 40. No one's saying that. You kind of bank it all on your 20s Mm -hmm. and 30s. Mm -hmm. So by the time you hit 40, you have to face who you are, whether you like it or not, because you're going to have to make decisions about, I'm 40, do I want kids? You know, like, you're going to have to make those decisions. Um, So 40 is your reality check year, but I do feel like, I mean, I'm 41 now, so I do feel like it's also like when you just kind of give zero Fs as well, I don't know if I can curse, so I'll just say like th- mm-hmm. there's a relief that also happens because mm-hmm. you gotta just face the music about um, who you are. So, in terms of to answer your question, in terms of how the world wants to define my success um, versus how I define it, I don't know if those will ever align, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. in, in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. But I have to, I, I have to own who I am, and I like who I am, and I like my story. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, I just have to, I have to, I had to figure out how, um, to be happy with that. Um, and it's not to say that those are things I still want and or don't think, you know, I still believe I can have them, but it's about having things on my terms and mm-hmm. not based on, cause I could have been married a long time ago if it was just about mm-hmm. checking the box. Right. Um, I'm cute. So <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm saying <laughs> 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 but um but it's you know it's about really understanding about what I want in a partner and you know not selling it settling for anything less than that you know it's about um do I you know like why do I want kids not just because mm-hmm. I think I should have them but like I mean I love kids I have a nephew mm-hmm. who has me completely wrapped around his finger um so you know it's not about that but like just figuring out um how to get these things on my terms so it's my my message to women who are in my boat or feel like they're in my boat is um 
the world is always gonna the world doesn't want to deal with the world so they always want to define you instead <laughs> mm. uh, um, they always want to you know project their stuff on you and I think we all know people who are in relationships who is like you need to be single <laughs> why are you okay. talking about me here? so you know but that that has been a process I'm not gonna lie and say that like I, I woke up I wake up every day and like oh you know I'm the baddest to be out there no like mm-hmm. you know I definitely have my moments it is a process it is you know it is something that you have to be intentional about um but I also feel like I'm happier more than I'm not um mm. and again I don't I don't see the world I don't, actually let me say this before we we wrap up because I was just talking about this at dinner it's actually the ones that are closest to you that will project certain things on you and I know I don't have time to write a blog but I always say that I was going to write something about this but like if people always ask well do you want kids you know do you want kids I don't have a problem with that question. You know, I'll answer them. But then it becomes, well, but you do want kids though, right? Well, what if I don't? Like, that's just a hard mm-hmm. follow-up. Mm-hmm. Or what they'll say, which is very nice of them. I know they think they're affirming me, but you don't have to say this. Another thing is, you should totally have kids. Um, You would be a great mother. I never, mother. I never mm-hmm. said, I never, I never mm-hmm. said that I would. Like, that's not, mm-hmm. if, if I say I don't want kids, that doesn't mean I'm lacking confidence. Like, and, and thank you for the affirmation. But we have to learn to just respect people's decisions. And, 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 and again, I've never answered someone saying, no, I don't want kids. But I see that happen to women often. Or if I say, when people ask me now, and I'll be like, oh, it just depends on what day, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out. Oh, well, you would be an mm-hmm. excellent mother. That, that's not, that has nothing to right. do with Right, that's not the concern. <laughs> or like, the same thing with married. Well, do you, you know, you want to be married, right? And I'm like, well, what if I don't? Like, does that make mm-hmm. the world's worse? Mm-hmm. You know, like, you can't, but that's you projecting your ideas on me. And so yes. I have become very nicely, I, I do it nicely, but I do check people about that. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. that, that, those are just those que- those innocent questions are really you projecting something mm. on 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 um, someone else, and so those are the things that I've started to be cognizant of, and and hopefully like start teaching people about as well. Yeah, I so appreciate this, um, especially being in the same boat. And yeah. I wanted to ask you that because sometimes I am not so graceful um, <laughs> with my response. <laughs> I wanted to hear from you um, what that sounded like, because um, I think it's Kiasia, I'm going to say. She said, people act like marriage and kids is something you can pick up at the grocery store. It's not (laughs) something I can predict and just go about casually, right? So those of us, like the desire may be there, the the desire may not be there, but that is not the mark of success in my life that I have kids or I have a spouse or what have you. That's not how I measure success. Um, But I think that a lot of times in the late night hours, it can become very frustrating. Like I know I get very uh, obsessed with the concept of legacy and what legacy am I leaving behind and not having kids. I sometimes feel like it's a little bit harder to point to where that might be until I can have those moments with myself to be like, girl, Mm -hmm. you have literally impacted millions of children. What are you talking about? Like that is a legacy, you know? Totally, totally. No, Kimberly, I couldn't agree more. If you, you were in education, (laughs) <laughs> your legacy is set, you know. Like, I mean, to your point, that, and I think about those things too. And there, are, there are different ways that you can leave a legacy behind, and there are no right or wrong answers. And and that's the part socially that hasn't caught up yet. Like, right. like there, there are no right or wrong answers to these things. And and I want to point out with Aisha RC. I hope I'm saying your name mm-hmm. right. Once you have a kid, then it's well, how many are you gonna have? Or, like. I could get a boyfriend tomorrow. The next thing is, well, when y'all get married? Well, first right. you wanted me to have a man. Now you got to worry about, like, <laughs> I got the man now. That's not enough. Like, you know, it's all right. something. And so you can't get caught up in all of that. And, it, and like I said, it's a lot easier said than done. I want to acknowledge mm-hmm. that. Like, there are definitely times I hate being on couples or there mm-hmm. are definitely times 
that, you know, like when I'm with my nephew and I'm like, I want this of my own. So there are no right or wrong answers. You, you just have to, it does take though an incredible amount of honesty, um, mm. which is why I had to start going to therapy because I'm just like, I need somebody else to listen to my BS because yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could figure all of this out on my own. So mm-hmm. that's, that's that. But um, yeah, like, and, and I just wanted for levity sake, when people are like, you know, well, do you want to be married? I'm like, well, do you have someone? Because if not, why are you even in my business? <laughs> like, are you sending them this way? You, I'm just like, saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you even in my business if you don't have someone lined up? Now, if you're asking me for that, oh, because I want to introduce you to someone, great. But if you just are trying to qualify me, <laughs> like, mm. you know, I, I can't. Mm. That was a powerful <laughs> statement you just made about someone trying to qualify you or mm-hmm. feel like, and as well in conjunction with, with what you were talking about with people projecting whatever mm-hmm. their situation is on you. Um, mm-hmm. I think that that is something that stands in a lot of our way of receiving people's projections. And this brings me Mm -hmm. back to that point about boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Like having the boundaries with someone to be like, yeah, so that's not appropriate for you to ask me. Or um, like you said, what what if I don't want to have kids? Then what? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, no, and 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 that's what those questions are. They're they're, they're just qualifying you. I I don't care about Like they're they're there to qualify you, you know, like Mm. as innocent as they may be, I'm not saying that these are malice people. Mm-hmm, people, mm-hmm. but they it is their qualifying question <laughs> yeah yeah I never thought about it that way but I really do um I really do appreciate that that framing um I think that's going to help quite a few folks because we don't need people to qualify us right and that's mm-hmm. again back to your original how you started this off with of spending time with self to understand what your skills are, to understand who you are, to understand what you bring into a space. You qualify you. But if mm-hmm. you don't know those things, then it is very easy to accept someone else's qualification or someone else's projection because you haven't taken the time to know that for yourself. Yeah. 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 So I want you to tell us, um, we're about to wrap up, but I want you to talk to us a little bit about the work that you do today, because I know you kind of vacillate between all of these spaces. Um, So talk to us about the type of work that you do, um, just in the event that someone wants to connect, uh, because you're doing some powerful stuff out here. Mm -hmm. Um, So talk to us about the work that you do currently. So my full-time job is with Camelback Ventures, um, and I do strategic partnerships and fundraising. So I, I work pretty externally. I don't work with the entrepreneurs. I don't have any say on who gets accepted. Um, but Camelback Ventures, again, we are an accelerator. We want a fellowship for early stage, entre- early stage uh, entrepreneurs of color and women. It's a phenomenal program. If you are a social entrepreneur, which means you have a venture in what we call tech for good, conscious tech, um, so education, policy work, uh, workforce development, um, and, you know, anything that we is, is for the social good, um, definitely check us out at camelbackventures.org for our next um, application cycle. Um, I also have my side work, uh, <laughs> which is with the Brain Trust Founder Studio, and that is actually a, um, an online platform and studio for entrepreneurs who have uh, ventures in beauty and wellness. So we actually serve uh, we actually serve entrepreneurs at various stages, from early stage to accelerate stage. Accelerate stage that is for uh, Black and Brown entrepreneurs as well. That can be female or male, by the way. Um, but you do have to have a business, something in beauty and wellness. Um, but that that's still there's a lot in between that. Don't think it's just hair and makeup. It actually a lot that a lot that can come within that 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 scope. Um so those are right now my two main projects. But I I have other things in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but um if anybody wants to connect with me, um my Instagram is is private, but if you just send me a note saying that you saw me on Brown Vault, if you send me a DM, I'll accept you. Um and my Instagram is at the Um 
But if it's something business related, um, you can always email me at Kelly, K-E-L-L-I, follow me, S-A-U-L-N-Y at gmail.com. And I will put that up for everyone. Kelly dot me, right? No, Kelly, just Kelly Solomon. Kelly Solomon, you know that. Gotcha, at gmail. I'll put that along the bottom um, so that you all can see that as well. Okay. All right. So let me see. So we have a question. Do you work with art businesses at all? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by art businesses um so someone who is an artist um Aisha oh. paints art uh and it kind of came out of it's like a self-healing venture if you will so might that fall under any of the umbrellas that that uh, probably if it's about self-healing that probably falls more with brain trust founder studio um which is brain is the brain trust studio i think that's dot com um camelback not as much uh so it wouldn't fit into camelback but if it has a healing component to it that would probably be more on the brain trust side um but i feel like they're i'm sorry i don't want to hold up the uh um, no you're fine go for it there's actually a fellowship for artists i just can't think of the name of it um check out is it you can check out Emerson because I know they do a lot of funding for artists. Um, but there's you another said one Emerson. Here. Yeah, the Emerson Collective. Okay. Um, they do a lot of grants for artists. Um, but there's another one. If I, if I remember it, Kimberly, I'll send it to you to send. Okay. And also remember, um, you all, Kelly has offered her uh, email address as well. So um, Kelly saw me at gmail.com um, as well as um, if you wanted to connect personally um, with Kelly, her Instagram at the style and taste. So if questions are kind of bubbling up, um, direct those to <laughs> the appropriate place so that um, you are able to get some support in that area. Kelly, if you could leave one thing with our community, um, you're like, y'all, if y'all didn't get anything that I said tonight, remember this, what would it be? Oh, now you didn't prep me for this question, Kim. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> you was flowing so good. I was like, do the thing, girl. Oh. I just have so many. I don't know. I guess the first would be you are enough. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just, you know, I was trying to figure out a way to also say like find, like, I did, uh, this is not going to be concise, but I did. No worries. I did this retreat five years ago where um, you had, it's called a life wheel or something where it's all things finance, how like all of these things that impact your life. And I chose joy, creativity, and spirituality. Cause mm -hmm. I figured if I reach my, my highest of heights in those three, everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. So like I would always like find your three anchors that you want to reach the highest of heights in mm -hmm. and just aim, you know, just just aim for those. But more more importantly, I would just stick with you are enough. I love that. I love that. Mona Lisa said, you are more than enough. Yeah. You, yes. you are plenty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So having said that, um, I do want to thank you for spending some time with Kimberly, us. You know, I'll do anything for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I still got to be like formal and stuff. And like, thank you. Thank you so much. But no, for real, thank you um, for imparting wisdom. Like I said, I have been watching um, for a while, you know, and every so often, you know, I send a little note or whatever, but mm -hmm. I really wanted to take this opportunity to to amplify what you are doing um, out here in the community and just really take a moment to spotlight um, all of this wisdom that you've gained along the way. I think it's very easy for people to see this side of things and like, you know, really honor all of um, the, the successes, but understanding the journey, I think a lot of times for uh, many of us helps us to process that 
this is a process <laughs> and we are along the way of the process. And as you mentioned, we're enough in this process, right? And things are going to happen in the time that they're supposed to happen. So when we do that internal work to connect with ourselves, then we create space for those opportunities to come about. So I thank you for um, leaving that with our community because I know I received it. I don't know about the people, but I, I know I received it right here. <laughs> so definitely want to make sure that you keep us in the loop on everything that you have going on. Um, sure. So that we can um, not just elevate the stuff that you're doing, but also make sure that we put these amazing opportunities out to our community. Yeah. Um, so definitely make sure that you keep us in the loop on that. Those of you who are watching, I know we had quite a few first time viewers. So definitely want to make sure that you know where to find us. So if you go to beautifulbrowngirls.com, that is our main website. You'll be able to find us there. We're also on Facebook at Beautiful Brown Girls. And we have a Facebook group called Beautifully Shaded. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram at Beautifully Shaded and on Twitter at Beautiful Brown You. If you really like um, this type of content and uh, what we stand for here at Beautiful Brown Girls is really thinking about sisterhood, support, and self-care. Everything that we do is about creating authentic friendships, swapping stories and experiences, and really operating from a space of love. We do want everyone to absolutely live their very best life, and we do that in community. So if this is something that you were listening in, and you're like, man, I kind of like what they're doing. We also invite you to check out our member space. This is our VIP space where we have lots of opportunities for you to connect. We've got book club. We've got workout clubs. We've got all types of classes, makeup classes, painting classes, wine classes, all types of things that are happening. You also are the first to find out about the new information that we have going on. So again, you can go to members.beautifulbrowngirls.com to find that information. And then lastly, I would love if you would connect with me as well. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Kimberlyn Jackson or on Instagram at Kimberlyn J. I uh, just started a new brand called, called Minding My Black Ass Business, um, where it is really just about being black and free. And all of the things that uh, we want to do, allowing us to be able to do that. So once again, Kelly, I thank you, ma'am. You are officially thank part you. of the beautiful Brown Girls family. I'm so honored. For you. <laughs> Um, so yes, definitely make sure that you stay in touch. Um, community, again, if you are wanting to connect with Kelly, you can connect with her at her email, um, kellysalmi at gmail.com. Let me just say Instagram is probably better because you get okay. my email is kind of hectic. So Instagram so is So let's take that better. back. DM her at uh, The Style and Taste and, and um, let her know that you saw her here on Brown Girl Boss and connect um, with Kelly there. So we will be back with our next episode of uh, Brown Girl Boss in two weeks. We have our next episode of Brown Versations is coming up this upcoming Monday with Sab and I. Uh, same time, same place. We appreciate you all so much and we will see y'all next time. Thank you, Bye guys. Everyone. Thank you, Kimberlyn. My pleasure.